Rack 5 I'm Darren Kitchen here at DEF CON 27 hungover with one of my favorite hackers, Dark Matter. Dude, it's Dude, so good to see you. So good to see you too, Darren, man. This is awesome. I feel like every time I see you, more antennas just come out of random places. <laughs> what is going on? Last time I saw you, you had a giant backpack with a bunch of pineapples and crazy times, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely crazy. So this project is the hashtag Wi-Fi Kraken. So it's the next iteration uh, moving forward on the more wireless monitoring projects. Uh, so I'm super excited about this one. Learned tons of lessons from the Wi-Fi Cactus and I wanted to implement them and push them into uh, a new project. So I give you the Kraken. All right, so walk us through it. What is the Kraken? So and, and actually for those that weren't aware uh, of the Wi-Fi Cactus, what was that? What was the goal? So the goal of that um, was to be able to capture all of the data at once. So uh, it's capable of doing 50 channels in 2.4 and 5 gigahertz of Wi-Fi all at the same time. And, uh, and why, why wouldn't you just use a single radio and you know, uh, aero dump to get all of the data? The problem is, like, look at this environment that we're in right now. There's easily maybe 200, 300 people in this room, right? That's a lot of devices, and they're communicating on different channels all at the same time, you're gonna miss some of that information if you're only listening on one of them. And, and then if you try to listen on all of them, you have to spend time hopping on each of those channels, you're gonna miss that information. The Cactus solved that problem by listening on all those channels at the same time. Nice, and so um, what were some of the challenges with that and, and uh, how have you addressed them with the Kraken? So uh, some of the biggest challenges were uh, the, the 100 meg ethernet port on the Tetra. <laughs> uh, which It's a throughput problem. It's a throughput problem. When you've got two radios that are doing 300 megabits, you know, yeah. with the 802.11n radios that are on the Tetra, uh, you know, pushing that much data back through, we're, we're restricting it down. So I wanted to open those pipes up. I wanted it to get more. Um, that's why from the first iteration of the Cactus, I took it and uh, improved it from 100 megabit switches to gigabit switches, and that like 10 x my throughput nice. by itself. So, uh, but here on the Kraken, I'm addressing that issue in an entirely new fashion. Uh, I'm going straight to the PCIe bus. Oh, how are you going to the PCIe bus? Because I see a lot of radios here. What are under these? Uh, is this aluminum? Is this? Uh, no, this is straight plastic. Yep, just this some generic okay. uh, Panduit off of Amazon. It's just uh, some nice cable management stuff. Okay. Spray painted black. Of course, like you, you do. Have hacker black. Yeah, they just didn't right. have it, so you got to make it yourself. Gonna gonna put on hacker mode. Yeah. All right. All right. Now continuing right, we're, on. We're ready now. Yes. We got everything in black. Uh, so basically, these are the MediaTek MT7612 wireless adapters. And what's super amazing about those right now is ever since kernel 4.25, they have in driver Linux driver, uh, in, excuse me, Linux kernel driver support. So basically, what that means is. You can do monitor mode, you can do injection, you can do all of the things that we love to do as hackers right. with these wireless cards. And it speaks it's what protocols? In the freaking kernel. Yeah. And it's 802.11ac. These there are 802.11ac you cards. You get B, G, G N, and A. And AC. Yep. And 20. 2.4 gigahertz and 5, 5 gigahertz. gigahertz. 20, 20 and 40. 40. So and you get the, 20, the 40 minus and the 40 pluses. So, okay. With that, and I know that that was a lot, but essentially, you know, you got different protocols and you got different bandwidths. Um, there's a lot of combinations therein. Um, so when we were talking previously about, you know, you're saying there's a lot of people in this room, and if you had a single radio, you would have to do channel hopping. So you can only listen on channel one, and you're missing everything on channel six, and then you hop to channel two, and you're missing everything on channel. You know, get the idea. How many permutations and combinations therein are there of modulations and channels and bandwidths? And how many radios here do you have to address that? Uh, so the last calculation I did was 84. Um, okay. So somebody who's <laughs> up on it a little bit more than me might know, but I believe it's 84 total combinations of those channels that are available to listen on. Um, and this particular project is only doing 14 of that. So not nearly as many as the Cactus, so I'm stepping down a bit. But I think I'm making up for it by getting more full frame capture. Uh, and I've got some new strategies that I've learned from uh, the Cactus that make my capturing more efficient. Right, okay, so tell me about that. What are you using to capture? Okay, so I'm using Kismet as the software. Kismet, all the things. It's, uh, 
Dragarn has Dragon done is such great work. Epic work, dude. Yeah. yeah, huge shout out to Dragarn and the support and uh, all the late night IMs and bug fixes and you know supporting me as I go to DEF CON with crazy projects like this to well, show I mean, you off. get in the Discord and you're just like, yo, dog, I'm trying to do this. And like people are in it. Like, like let's do this. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Kismet. Shout out to Dragorn for just uh, amazing Kismet community and, and you know what we've got going on here. Um, everyone should be you running Kismet now. It's super stable. Uh, the web UI is super powerful. We can search. We can look at what's going on here. Uh, we can see right now these reds. We've got some people that we've already captured their handshakes. Nice. Like that's what the red indicates. Oh, like dude. we've already seen that. Like this is live real time data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I was saying, the problems that I wanted to fix with this that I didn't have on the cactus, real time visibility into the data. This right. has got a screen. Got I pop screen. up and we can already start seeing what's happening right here around us. Yes. And and, and you don't have to wear it, so it's much better for your back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was carrying it around at Black Hat, and I got a little crick in the neck, so I ran to Walmart and got a little luggage cart to freaking nice. pal it around on, so because it was too much. But okay. Um, yeah. So what's actually in the box? So we, okay. we've established you got, so we got the wireless of the cards. Tech cards. So those are going those into are USB. Yes, this these are USB, USB three. Yep, USB three. So um, because I know a little bit about how to do uh, uh, so, uh, board so, calculations and stuff, so I wanted to go straight to the PCIe bus. So you're actually using a real computer. You've yes. got an ATX motherboard. Yes. I did something very similar years and years ago with uh, uh, Alpha uh, AWUS 036H cards. Yes, you did. And that was USB 2.0, and I had to use a real motherboard with like 14 USB ports, and I had to add USB adapters. Right. Uh, we didn't have you know PCIe like we do now. Yes. Um, and, and even then, like, yeah, it is a there is a bandwidth problem here. So you're addressing it with horsepower. Absolutely. What's in this thing? I see an Intel. Yeah, so this is just an i5. Uh, it's a fourth gen, so it's nothing fancy. It's something I had lay around. Um, and so if something got damaged or something broke, I literally have another motherboard with me so I could just take this out and swap it in. Like yeah. I'm ready for breakage. Uh, this was uh, thrown together as how can I do it pretty cheaply? Yeah. Uh, how can I do it with off the super off the shelf stuff? And then how can I make it as rugged as I could make it? Like, you know, this is not a Pelican case. It looks like it was called Condition One, which they're about $150 cheaper than Pel and it's solid. It's rock solid. I've been super happy with this. Uh, and this whole thing, I'm in under, I would say maybe like seven, easily under 700 bucks. Okay. Yeah, so. And for 700 bucks to be able to build something that is going to sniff way more than what you can with a single radio, what was your approach to tackling the bandwidth problem now that you've switched from using Wi-Fi pineapples and doing that on board and then having a network throughput issue? Uh, where's your throughput issue here? So right now we've got the two USB 3.0. So one thing about motherboards is if you look at the root hub of which uh, USB root hubs there are, there's yeah. typically only one and then they've got a bus, right? And then so everything's coming through one five gigabit uh, USB port. That's so the thing about USB, it's shared. I want it, yeah, yeah, it's shared, which is super handy because you can hook up to like 250 devices on a single bus, but that's not cool for throughput. So I shoved in some, I found these seven port USB cards, PCIe cards, so I've got five gigabits on each of those, run that out to seven of the, the adapters each, and then pipe all that through to be able to get you know the best bandwidth that I can get in this situation. So in that which case Which gives though, me about 10 gigabits per second running through the PCIe bus, and then my next bottleneck is the solid state hard drive, which I'm just using a SATA six gig, which gives me about 500 megabytes per second throughput, or four gigabits. Right, but you so could, that's my you could solve that with oh, a RAID. With, with a RAID, yeah, yeah, RAID zero this. That was actually my plan, just didn't get around to it. I ended up doing a talk at DEF CON this year, so that kind of fried some of my time. Congrats. So thank you so much. And your talk was, what was the title of it? I thought it was so good. <laughs> uh, I, I called it, I Know What You Did Last Summer, Three Years of Wireless Monitoring at DEF CON. And what information did you glean from monitoring wireless traffic at DEF CON for years? Uh, some of the most like crazy interesting things that I found is APIs leak. Like, APIs do leak. Uh, I found two particularly. There's one from a company called Met.no. Uh, it seemed to be like a weather type service. And the specific query was for sunset data, like trying to just figure out when the sun goes up, right? Uh, the sun goes down. Yeah. And, um, uh, what was happening is that it was making an HTTP GET request, you know, totally normal. Whatever. But one of the text, parameters in there was latitude and longitude. Okay, all right, that's harmless, right? Sure, but you've got what? the MAC address of a unique phone, <laughs> and you've got it's Latin long. Right. So now we can now track that person as their phone re requests, you know, updates for when the sunset's going to change. Oops. Oopsie. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that wasn't the only weather-related app that did this. No I found, joke. Yeah, Accu-Weather. Uh, I found.com had another one as well. 
Um, and theirs is uh, doing the same thing. It was from a ZTE desktop widget. Huh. Uh, yeah. They're Blew my thinking, mind. I couldn't even believe I found it. They're like, oh, why bother with HTTPS? It's, it's just weather data. What's the privacy concern? Right. Well, and here's the thing. Most of the time when you s install an app and it's like, oh, it wants to get your location, yeah. you have to hit allow for privacy permissions. Yes. So you're now leaking that thing that you think is secure because you gave it privacy permissions. And then they're... And there's no enforcement that it has exactly, to Exactly. They're it completely destroying your trust and uh, uh, by passing it over HTTP. Wow. So yeah, that was. And you must have seen tons of unique devices. Oh, tons and tons. So many so that uh, the year before last, uh, when uh, Kismet, the web UI was still super beta, uh, we were actually crashing the server because there was just too many devices, you know, to the tune of like 40, 80,000 devices seen at a single instance. Wow. So I haven't actually calculated the total number of unique devices I've seen um, uh, because I've been looking at like way deeper down the, you know, the tunnel, the rabbit hole. Yeah. But you're also at DEF CON, right. so you know, MDK3, MDK4 is running, right. there's MAC addresses that you'll never oh, see totally. again. Oh, totally. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, and then people are doing the ESP32s that are just beaconing out, you know, all their yummy goodness. Yeah. Yeah, this, it's, is a, it's, this is a hostile network <laughs> environment, and it's also just trashed. Right, yeah. It's super trolly. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm really stoked to see the evolution of this. The Kraken looks awesome. Do you have this up on your GitHub, up on your blog? Oh, it's, yeah. Speaking of that, so I released some code because, you know, um, as I was doing PCAP analysis and going through all of my data, uh, Wireshark just doesn't cut it. Like when you have a 2 gig, 3 gig, 5 gig file yeah. and you go do, I want to see all the HTTP GET requests. Come back 30 huh. minutes later. Right. Guess what? I'm a single, need, you know, I'm a single guy doing the analysis. I don't have a team of, you know, crazy people doing analysis for me. I'm like, it's me, and I need to do it as efficiently as possible. So uh, I looked at a bunch of other tools. Um, I I worked with some even commercial people, and their tools didn't, uh, you know, work for my use case. They yeah. just didn't handle the wireless frames. Um, to be able to decode anything, so I wasn't getting anything useful from it. The one um, exception to that was Network Miner. Uh, oh, shout out to what Net is it, Resec. What, is, uh, what does Network Miner use on the back end? Uh, I, I have no idea, but he's done some uh, amazing coding with that. Net Resec has made it so. Uh, two years ago, he gave me a free copy of it to use, and I didn't see very much data. I gave him feedback, and then he did a big update, and now it works well to, on network uh, wireless data, rather. Uh, not network data, but so, wireless so, so capture it, so frames. It ingests your PCAP and then you can do yep. analysis. And then it there. automatically does dissection. So it'll show you DNS, it'll show you HTTP, it'll show you uh, files, any sort of files it can reassemble. Nice. So it does all that work for you. It's a forensics tool to yeah. go through and you know do uh, like deep dives on PCAPs. Um, uh, but, so, but still, that's a tool that, you know, I mean, it did work with putting large amount of files, uh, large gigabytes worth of PCAPs into it but I still was only running his custom query sets, right? right? And I wanted to know like all the SSIDs at DEF CON. I wanted to know weird SSIDs, like ones that are bigger than two, uh, 32 bytes. I wanted to totally. know things, you know, I wanted to do like SQL queries on the data set and PCAPs just aren't good for that. So I ended up writing a tool, uh, PCAPinator, uh, released nice. that on Friday during my talk. Uh, it's on my GitHub, uh, github.com slash Mike Spicer, or uh, M Spicer. Um, you can find that. I'm sure we can link it down in the oh, notes totally, below. Oh, totally, totally. Uh, and uh, yeah, so check that tool out. It's still super rough, um, but it does work, I think. So uh, be gentle if you awesome. <laughs> need it. But I'm totally willing to support it and, and looking for people to help me build it out. And the fun thing about this, much in the same way that you know the Kismet community on Discord and everything else, um, you know, scroll down to the comments if you've got ideas too about how to improve this. And you know, if you happen to know an amazing SQL-like tool for PCAP analysis and things of that nature, we're all in this together. Yeah, and it's just so cool totally. to see this evolve. So you're really part of this with us. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about this community. Absolutely. And like people come up to me and they're like, hey, have you thought about this or that? And I love it because it's like, no, I haven't actually. Like, that's a crazy cool idea. Um, and that's kind of how the Kraken happened. It's like, have you thought about if you make your cactus concealable? Like, my goal for this is to throw all the antennas inside of here, close the lid, go set it somewhere, completely powered on, run it for six hours, which the batteries are capable of, and just let it capture data doing really? its thing. Completely covert. And no one even knows it's there. Looks like you guys have Pelican cases all throughout here. Yep. Looks Looks yep, like yep. it should belong perfectly. Nice. Yeah, just not at the airport because, you know, <laughs> if you see unattended yeah, yeah, baggage, yeah, yes, you need to yes, let TSA yes, know immediately. Absolutely. <laughs> Dude, Mike, it is always dude, a pleasure to Darren, see you. Darren, man, it is awesome to see you too. Go check out Mike's work. We uh, love what Dark Matter is doing. 
And uh, for all of us here at Hack5, trust your techno lust. Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com.